Presentation of this program, KCAA, the Inland Talk Express. Welcome to the Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Each week on this program, Jeff and his guests share their expertise, personal anecdotes, and the latest industry news to keep you in the loop. Now to provide you with insight and help you navigate the consistently changing world of real estate lending, here is your host for the Mortgage Voice, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice, and welcome to it. We come to you each and every week. We're bringing you all the kinds of news that you're going to need to do to understand, to be able to go out there in the marketplace and make better informed choices about mortgages, about real estate, about how to do things in order to get the best deal and the best deal in your mortgage. That's what we try to do each and every week. We are available online. We are available a lot of different places. One of the places we are is YouTube. Go to Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice. Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice. It's on YouTube, and we've got hundreds of shows there last week, this week. Uh, and couple that up with what we have as our website, themortgagevoice.com, and you will not only be able to see us in a couple different places, but also connect to either the guests or myself, questions you might have, comments, other things that you want to see on the show. We get a lot of people that come to the show new all the time. So the format and what we do is pretty similar each and every week. I talk, then we bring some guests on, they give expert opinion, and then we sign off with either uh, a, a different viewpoint or some fun facts about what's going on in the world. Anyway, again, I'm Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice, and welcome to the show. Let's just jump right into the 30-year uh, fixed rate and all the different mortgage rates that we talk about each and every week, as well as what's happening in the bond market. 30-year fixed rate is at 7.09%. As I said, it's about a point and a half off its highs of the summer at 8.45% 8 it was. Today is at 709 It is not great, but it is a lot better than it was. So anticipating the next question, well, what's it going to be next month? Yeah, that's a good question to have. And keep that in mind as we talk to the experts in the field as well as um, uh, what is and is not important in terms of what the experts say. And, of course, we're talking about Charles and Wendy, who come on the show regularly to talk about not only the programs in the different areas that they service, but also about the trends in the marketplace. And these kinds of things, like lowering of the interest rate, is uh, important to understand. This is a cyclical biz business. We have these downturns, we call it in the mortgage business, happen all the time. Now, usually when there are downturns in the economy, the real estate business is booming, and so is the mortgage business. Now, what do I mean by that? When we have uh, a situation that we've been involved with, which is inflation based on an oversupply and also oversupply of money, and an uh, undersupply based on the supply chains of goods, uh, we had costs of goods go up. And all that means is things cost more than they used to, right? And that's not a great thing. Well, that, that happens in all kinds of industries. But when it happens in the mortgage industry, the mortgage people do very well because interest rates drop in order to stimulate people to buy houses, to go out there and you know, get new stuff for the house, to buy new furniture for the house. This housing market, lowering of interest rates has been used since I've been in the business, and that's going back to the uh, 80s. Um, and it's a way by which governments have always used the interest rate that the Fed charges, lowering it to stimulate the economy. Well, that's currently not happening because the reverse is happening. In order to stop inflation, they've raise the interest rate, slow down demand, and therefore the cost of goods goes down. We'll get into that in a little bit, but let's get back to the interest rates here. 30-year fixed rate, as I said, is 7.09%. The 15 years at 6.5%. That's not a bad loan. FHA is at 6.42. That's not a bad loan. 30-year jumbo, this is a bad loan, 7.53%. And as we all know, the jumbo loans since the 3% mortgages have not been, uh, not been that attractive. Uh, the reason being is, is that the companies that do jumbo loans have to pay for the lousy jumbo loans they did when mortgage interest rates were 3%. You can imagine 
if you have a million of these loans at three, four, five percent jumbo loans sitting on your books, there's no way to get rid of them. There's no way to monetize them. And so they're just sitting there as an asset, but you can't liquefy it. So therefore, you can't grow your business. And if you're a publicly traded company, your stock goes down. If you're a privately traded company, you're looking for sources of re of um, capital. And that capital then is probably 7 or 8%. So this is, this is not great. That's why jumbo rates are what they are. The 5-1 arm is at 6.65%. So as you can see, between the 30 and the 5-1, all the ones in between 15 and FHA, rates have really come down and made uh, borrowing a little more attractive. And I, I say a little more. Actually, it's a lot more. Uh, if you consider every percentage point ver hundred thousand dollars cost you a hundred bucks so it's a five percent mortgage on a hundred thousand dollars cost you five hundred dollars a month now that's simple interest of course uh, i'm not amortizing these things but you can get what i'm talking about if you've paid on a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage uh five percent at 500 a month and it gets raised to six and a half percent well now you're paying 650 a month well that's a big rise but as everyone knows the interest rates are way more than that uh and also, the uh, loan amounts, especially in California, Southern California, because the house prices are expensive. If we're talking San Bernardino and Riverside counties, want to say hey to all my peeps out there and all the people who are listening to the show trying to gain some advantage on their person who they're talking to about buying and selling real estate. Um, yeah, it, it's a... It's a real advantage if rates come down, and they have been coming down. The two years at 4.73%, and the 10 years at 4.20%. Now, the spread between the 2 and the 10 is back up to about uh, 50 basis points, half a point. And uh, so th that's, that's a bit of a spread. But if you've noticed, 4.73, we had 5.25, a half a point higher in the two-year yield um, not three weeks ago, uh, the 10-year, very similar. We were up over 5%, which is almost uh, eight-tenths of a percentage point. Today, we're at 4.20. And, uh, yeah, so you can see that uh, as a result, we see people and their demand for uh, treasury bonds has increased, which lowers the yield and, conversely, raises the price. Now, there are two things on all these bonds, and you – whether you are an investor or whether you just want to really know why these things are what they are, when the government sells debt, okay, that's what, that's what this is all about, right? I mean, the government is selling debt so that they can put us more in debt. $32, $33 trillion, I think, is the number now. So if, if that's what treasuries are, so they can fund whatever it is they think is important today, that's what they do. They sell paper. And the paper... If it is yielding you a certain return, that makes it attractive. But if the price is also discounted to buy them, that makes it really attractive. So in times where there is demand for the product, the yield goes down, but the price goes up. And that's what's been happening. So as the money gets soaked up into the treasuries, that's what's happening. So as we are... Uh, closing in on the last couple of minutes of this particular segment, uh, the CPI came out, uh, the Consumer Price Index. Inflation itself is uh, falling, and it's falling in a lot of good ways, as everyone can notice, and <laughs> you'll, you'll notice it slightly. If it's in the reverse, actually going up, you'll notice it quickly, and that's because Going up is fast, coming down is slow. And we're talking, of course, about gas prices, uh, part of the core CPI, or just consumer price index. The inflation rate is all about gasoline here in Southern California. If you're driving around, you know you can't, you, get, you need a car. You're not taking the subway or the bus or anything else, you're driving. So whether it's a big gas guzzler like some people have or an electric car, it's still about gas. Uh, the gasoline that either powers the generators that powers the electricity or the gasoline that powers your motor that's driving around. So the price of gasoline has really fallen, I think, 19% over the last few months. It's quite a lot. Um, I think it's 9% over the year because, as we all know, in the summer, gas prices go up. 
Right. It's a it's the summer blend. It's because uh, something's offline or somebody kicked the wrong button. I don't know. But this cyclical nature of the way prices go up and down, as my friends who are economists say, oh, it's just the nature of of the way capitalism supply and demand works. And I always say, no, it's the nature of how greed works. Now, I understand that very much. We'll get into some of that in the later section. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, and uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back. Segment two, Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to us. And thanks for uh, getting involved with the show. It's very easy to do. You can uh, either reach me on any different measure of, you know, way that you can do it, whether it's through the KCA website, the YouTube website, Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice, uh, themortgagevoice.com, or I think all of our podcasts, you can still get a hold of me. What are those podcasts again, Daryl? Hey, Jeff, they're Apple Podcasts, Google Music Play, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Radio.com, YouTube, and iPodclips.io. Excellent. Oh, another thing, Podclips.io. I pitch it every week, and there's a reason why. I like one-stop shopping. I don't know about you. Maybe you're an Internet surfer and you just love searching things out. But in today's world, trying to find something that's trustworthy and where you can find a lot of stuff, I mean, what comes to mind? Trader Joe's, Walmart, uh, Amazon. All these places seem to have everything you want. But in the podcasting world, podclips.io, they have a lot of different topics, a lot of great people on there, experts in their field who will help you really find out what you need to know in a very easy way. You just kind of click on it and listen. It's <laughs> pretty simple, right? Anyway, podclips.io. I'm Jeff Barton. This is the Mortgage Register again. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, so uh, in driving over here, I'm, I'm, I've been involved in negotiations. Now, we don't talk about negotiations all that much on the show uh, because it's usually between, you know, you and the loan officer or you and the real estate agent or you and the seller or a combination of all those things to come up with what normally is a very stressful thing. Uh, I don't want this. They want that. I don't want to pay that much. They want too much. How am I going to get what I want? I don't want to give them what they want. These are the kind of things that go on on a daily. Now, there are many strategies that an agent will work in terms of dealing with you as the consumer, whether you're getting a loan on a refi or getting a loan on a house whether you're getting a house on a purchase or whether you're selling a house on a purchase. All kinds of ways that your agent will work with you. There is the hunt them, tell them, and sell them approach, which is, I know, listen to me, do what I say. Now, we are all privy to that type of agent. And usually, the type of agent you get is really about the weakest part of you, i.e., I don't like confrontation, so you get somebody that tells you what to do. That just seems the way attraction works in any business, but certainly in this business. Now, rarely you get someone who is patient, can tell you things you don't know, will present you with great options, and will be able to present you with uh, a very easy listening kind of presentation of the facts without getting involved with the hysteria of whatever it is that can be, you know, something you'd get excited about. That type of person is a person that you need to pay attention to. And the reason being, there's a lot going on in these things, right? The, just a quick story. The, the negotiation I'm involved with is between two parties, and I'm the neutral third party in the middle. So my basic job is to try to bring sides together when they have competing interests. I've done it a lot in my career, and I'm currently doing it. Now, the the problem with it is, of course, and this is something to consider when you're in any of these negotiations, that I can't predict what's going to happen as the neutral third party between the parties. But I do know what both sides want. They know what each one doesn't want to give, 
but they don't know how they're going to get to what they want. Normally in negotiations, if you walk away wanting a little bit more and dissatisfied a little bit, those are probably pretty good negotiations, meaning that you gave up some to get some. And trying to find a way to get to that is kind of what I do. That's what the nature of the business in this particular deal and throughout my career since back in the 80s. So if you are deciding between trying to find an agent, trying to find a solution, understand that the agent or the loan officer or the person who is that neutral party that you're trying to get to help you decide what to do and then how to get it is one of the most important decisions you can make in any of these processes. It's yes about the numbers. And it's yes about, you know, the refrigerator that you want in the deal. And yes, it's about, no, I'm going to take those window coverings with me. And yes, no, I'm not going to take a 9% interest rate hard money cash deal right now. I'll wait around until I get the 8.5% hard money cash deal right now. All of that is extremely important. But helping you get from A to B is as important because you got to get up every day and do your life. This type of negotiation on these types of things is not your life. It stresses your life. And negotiations are stressful. And because you have a life, you have to trust somebody in that life to be able to handle the negotiations for you the best way possible. Now, I bring all this up, right? This is a long-winded explanation to say, look, there's lawsuits are coming here to California in the real estate world. They had them in the mortgage world previously when there was kickbacks from title companies and such back in, I don't know, maybe the early to late 90s when your freedom of choice and knowledge of what was being offered to your agent in order to steer you to them wasn't disclosed to you. Matter of fact, it wasn't even talked about. And a lot of people made a lot of money by steering clients to certain things like the title company or the escrow company or any number of other companies. Well, they don't do that anymore. It's illegal and it's against RESPA. Problem solved. But in the real estate world, it has always been, hey, 5 6% commission. Seller pay, we split the commission with the buyer's agent. Well, those lawsuits that have been sweeping across the country are coming to California. California is the richest real estate market per capita in the country. The amount of commissions that have been, you know, that will follow this trend of, okay, the real estate companies and uh, California Association of Realtors are going to be held accountable for it. And if it's like any other of these states and, and places where NAR or CAR or whatever AAR you're working with in what state, they're losing billions of dollars to the plaintiffs who are the sellers. That's going to come to California. The question is for you, either the seller or the buyer, what's going to happen when nobody wants to pay the buyer's agent? I know this sounds incredibly boring, but listen, if you don't have representation as a buyer that's just your own, you're going to get taken. That person I described is the perfect person for you, buyer or seller. They're not going to be there. Somebody's got to pay them. Now, either the buyer comes out of pocket, eh, that's not going to happen, or the seller comes to some understanding that it's in their best interest, i.e., if they don't do it, they might get sued because they have one agent handling both sides of the deal. And because they're paying for it, they're the ones that are going to get sued in any kind of dispute with the buyer down the line. So these ideas of shared commissions, which have been proven to be, you know, you, you're going to lose a lot of money if you're a CAR. You're going to lose a lot of money if you're, you know, one of the larger real estate companies. But how is this problem going to be solved? And as a consumer, it's coming, and it probably comes next summer, hot in the real estate market. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton. I'm your voice in the mortgage industry. And I do this each and every week uh, as, as kind of a service, public service, to try, to try to 
gets you to the right place, uh, mentally as well as uh, knowledge. The knowledge that we bring to the show is real and it's um, authentic. And my personal experiences are just trying to say, hey, this is what's coming, whether it's lower interest rates or whether it's lawsuit in the real estate business. They're all coming. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. I'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show, for coming to us each and every week, trying to find some answers to those problems that you have. We're end of the year, and as everyone knows, end of the year gets a little nutty. Whether you're a holiday celebrator or not, you're going to get caught up in it. And, of course, there's always the Uncle Joe or uh, Aunt Tilly that says, Hey, you know what? Uh, back in 19-whatever, I bought a house at Christmas time. It was the best deal of my life. So there's guilt if you're out there looking right now, trying to find something. Uh, good news is uh, mortgage interest rates have come down some, and and that's always a good thing. Anyway, if you want to see and hear me all the time, guess what? That, that would be a nightmare. But if you do, go to YouTube, Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice, and you can do that. This show, as well as hundreds of others, I've been there for a number of years now and continue to be. Also, KCAA, they have their own website and uh, archiving all these shows. KCAA is the radio station that brings us to you out there in the IE, uh, some parts of L.A. County and Orange County and up to 15. Anyway, I am Jeff Barton, and this is The Mortgage Voice. Uh, always bringing best people onto the show. Wendy Van Wessel has been on the show many times because she is the expert that I go to for information about what's happening in that part of the world, which we call programs, and she works for Change Wholesale. Uh, no, you don't work for You work for Kind Wholesale. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Wendy, how are you? I'm just fine, Jeff. And yourself? I'm fine, thank you, too. Sorry for the long, long-winded long explanation about <laughs> things going on. No, 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 that's fine, because there are uh, things that move and shake now, as things are going down. Yeah, okay, I'm it's having a little... Three, five, will come back just a little. Go ahead. No, I'm just having a little trouble hearing you. I don't know if it's uh, uh, moving around, but when I do get you, uh, clearly, that's great. Um, tell us about what is happening at KIND program-wise. I hadn't talked to you in a while. Uh, I always like to get the uh, idea of what's out there, programs, and uh, uh, what's hot, what's not. Well, we just started to do foreign nationals. Okay. And that means you work, live and work outside the country. You can still get along here. Um, it was very interesting that the investors or the people that are offering the programs liked foreign nationals better than they liked ITIN numbers because ITIN numbers are protected by the bankruptcy laws, whereas foreign nationals are not, and that's usually the first towards, step towards citizenship, so they're less likely to default in their minds. I Me thought that was very interesting. Meaning that um, uh, if you own property here, you're one up on getting your citizenship? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a first step towards, I don't know about the rest of having to wait for all the other stuff, right. but if you own property here and you're making payments, you're starting to get a credit line and all that other stuff over here. So if you live and work outside the country, that's an option for you. Okay, so as a result of that, if you do default, the banks can foreclose easier or more easily? Well, you're not protected by the bankruptcy laws oh, like I the see. ITIN people are. I see. I, no, I had not known that, that. These are the intricacies of a very strange market where interest rates are high that I just I don't know about, but obviously there's a pool of uh, people who would be interested in a, a product like this. Have you seen it be successful yet? Yeah, especially in Florida. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's funny you say that. No, I used to work with a guy down in Florida, uh, and he, he worked with a lot of Brazilian clients, and they always worked with Banco Brazil, as a matter of fact. I don't know if that's um, similar to what you have going on, but uh, it was just interesting. I think it's more like Helm. Helm okay. was doing that, too, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, and then there's also the non-QM loans that if you have a profit and loss, you don't have to have three months worth of bank statements. You just have to have a CPA or a CTEC attest to, to, that they attest to they have reviewed or done your taxes, and you can do a loan with a P&L. Uh, you can also do it with 12 months worth of bank statements. There's a DSCR programs where the debt coverage ratio when you have a non-owner-occupied property 
Those are all very popular, and the pricing is getting much better on those as well. And they can be closed in two and a half weeks. Go ahead. No, that's fine. No, I was going to ask you about AI and the potential for fraud in these CPA letters. Um, Licensing being what it is and being able to not only sign but be able to actually, you know, uh, authenticate and um, really come across as this is a a, a legal document, either the CPA letter or a voicemail or – verification of employment do you find that that's any concern for anybody yet or is it not i i, I think it always is jeff I, and mm-hmm. I, and and regarding those letters that we get it needs to be on their letterhead and signed by them sure i don't know if we take electronic signatures i would have to ask that question sure and then also they double check and make sure their license is intact i just get so worried because i know how accurate ai can be and uh, yeah. and they're now doing things in movies which are really just i mean they're bringing people back from the dead and having them appear as if they're standing right in front of you um it's i forget which actor it was was it robert de niro that looked a lot younger and they did a lot of different things with him and took bits yeah 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 that was very interesting yeah there's yeah there's i just i just worry about that and i always worry about it this time of the year because people get taken advantage of so easily when they're desperately trying to find a house or trying to get the best mortgage rate out there and all of a sudden you know uh they get lulled into doing something they probably shouldn't be doing and uh you know there are so many things for compliance right that there we have just a big huge department for compliance and they make sure that the the closing disclosure goes out, and they have three days to wait on this and four days to wait on that. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on your credit report, to keep an eye on on the title for your home, to protect yourself, to make sure that there's not those straw straw loans or straw buyers that right. are doing something with your your title to your property. But but I think that a lot of the compliance laws that we hate, the Dodd Frank Act <laughs> brought a lot of them in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they protect, they protect as well, but there's, there's always shysters out there. They're just, yeah, Yeah. you just have to be aware of things. Yeah, I I agree with you. Okay. So in talking about getting back to what I like to talk about is how you're helping borrowers out there. Are you seeing uh, more loans, less loans? Where are we in the business cycle over at uh, Kind? It's starting to get busy again. Good. I think that people have seen that the rates are going lower because there was no inventory. Not so sure about what's going on with the inventory. I hope they start building new homes again. It was always a seller's market, and they were outbidding each other. Yep. Well, now it's going a little bit the other way. And don't forget that we have buy-down options for you, too, if you have a motivated seller, and they'll be out there. You watch this month, next month, the month after that, they'll be more and more motivated. Um, but Tell us about can, that. What, what's a buy down? What do you mean by that? The- a buy down. So you can have a three year to two year to one year or two one or a one zero. That means that the seller or someone's going to be paying that amount, the difference between a 5.99 or a 6.99 rate for that year, to be paying that in and covering that. So if you have a, if you have a let's do it with a two one because it's easier. Okay. You have a two one buy down. If you have a rate of, say, 6.99, the first year you would be paying 4.99% for 12 months. Okay. The next year you'd be paying 5.99% for 12 months, and then you'd go back to the 6.99 rate for the rest of most likely the 30-year term. But there's 40-year terms out there, too, to help with your debt-to-income ratio. Interesting. Yeah, that's a very interesting. Are you finding, as you said, there'll be more and more sellers willing to pay the buy-down in order to have the house sold? In order to have the house sold as an incentive to purchase the property. Right. So right now we have a, a, a lack of supply. But I wonder how many people, when they don't have that COVID um, loan modification and other things going on, do the banks have homes that they're going to put on the market? Is there a lot of them that they're holding, or are they all out there? Or did they make deals with them and they're never going to come on the market? That's an interesting aspect to supply and demand part of it. You know, that brings up a, a question. Um, I, I'm sure you've heard of Arrive Homes. The, the, the Bill Gates has invested all this money. They're a hedge fund that goes out and buys houses, single-family houses in neighborhoods, thousands, hundred, you know, ten, tens of thousands of houses. They pool them together. They, they rent them out, and then the aggregate gets divided up among the people who invest in this type of housing. 
uh, meaning that corporate housing is taking over single-family residences in certain cities more than other cities. But that is kind of – there's a bill in Congress right now to prevent that. And so there's this back and forth whether – do you think it's right? Do you, you know, should government be involved in, in the markets? And, you know, is this really free market or is this just, you know, a guy like Bill Gates, you know, getting involved with something like this, uh, obviously to make money? Um, so I, I don't know where you come down on that, but – Housing on the market is really important, and taking housing off the market uh, by corporate hedge funds, I, I don't know if that's such a great idea either. I don't know how you solve it, but... Well, it's my personal opinion that less government is better. <laughs> yeah, nah, mine too. It is, it, is, it is also that uh, I don't think we, that, that the average person and having the dream of having their home can compete with that kind of stuff. So does that make our American dream of being a homeowner go away? I sure hope not. And I hope that they do get stopped because monopolies are never a good thing. No. All that, you're preaching to the choir here. And, and again, I'm, I'm yes on both sides, so I, I really don't know. I, like I say, I like to talk about it, but I don't have the policy within me to be able to say this is the answer. Listen, we're up against it, too. Jeez, that was a fast 10 minutes. I'm sorry about that. It was. Wow. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Daryl's giving me the know. high sign. <laughs> anyway, Wendy, I really appreciate it. You want to shout out a phone number for people who are looking for not only great product, but perfect uh, in terms of their knowledge in the business? Let them know how they can get in touch with you. Sure, sure. And we have 100% loans, too. Right. So they can half us. So my number is 818 818- 292-2572 or W. Van Wessel at kindlending.com. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I missed you at the um, Christmas party the other day. Oh, I am too. Yeah, I know. Anyway, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. You have a great day. You too. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show, for listening to us all the time that we come to you Saturday and Sunday. You're driving around in your car, you're trying to figure out what to do, whether it's pick up a hammer or go to church or whatever it is. Uh, we're here for you, trying to help you figure out what to do about that mortgage that you need. You want to buy that house. You want to buy your kid a house. You want to get grandma and grandpa into some place closer to you because they're too far away and you can't take care of them. I understand there is a lot of stress in those decisions. Plus, hey, it's the holidays again. So, yeah, it's uh, it's one of our uh, four or five holiday shows that we take a look at not only the stresses in your life, but some of the solutions that are out there currently uh, with a market that is improving. Housing looks to be a little less, uh, uh, I guess, uh, less stringent in terms of the availability of housing. There's more of it today than there was two or three weeks ago. Anyway, joining us once again is our favorite, Charles Giscombe, who joins us. Charles, how are you? I'm great, Jeff. Thanks for having me, as always. Thank you very much, and thanks for coming on. Hey, how did you like that in-season tournament, huh? Hey, think? come on, man. The, hey, listen, the old guys prevail. How about that? I like when the old guys win. You know, it, it, it makes me feel good because I, I like, <laughs> I'm a fellow old guy. So <laughs> yeah, I like I like the tournament because it brought interest to the game that we love. So that's really what it's about. I don't really care who won, but it was interesting because the players seem to care. <laughs> it's an extra 500000 so that'll well, make anybody hey, care. I- are you kidding me? Some of the guys only were making five hundred thousand. So right. LeBron and his boys get these guys a million dollars now, and they not, now they got a million dollars as opposed to five hundred for a salary. How about that? Yeah, that's that's not bad. You know, when I, I bring up the tournament and the uh, the excitability, because this time of year a lot of people just check out from the the mortgage industry, the mortgage market. Either they stop working or they stop looking for housing because you know it's the holidays and all. And I always say, you know, there are great deals out there today. More so than in some other markets, just because we've seen an uptick in housing uh, availability on the market and lowering interest rates. Uh, what are you seeing? Our, and you know what? I c- you couldn't have said it better, Jeff. Right now, what's going on is you know you're getting you're, you're getting the end season tournament for the end of right. the end of the season with people in regards to this mortgage stuff. They see these interest rates go down, and it's so funny because they say, "Hey, the interest rates went down a point, went right. down a half a point." Right. You know, and, right. And, and as we're telling them the whole time. You should get in because 
this is what's going to happen anyway. <laughs> We're right. just looking at what's inevitably going to happen. So, hey, listen, if it creates the in-season type of buzz and vibe, I'm all for it. The only thing we can do is be consistent, letting them know what the truth is, and letting them know that regardless if the interest rates are a little bit up or they're going down, you still should get in while the market and the values are still there. Now, uh, uh, Charles works for United Security Financial. It's a firm that's uh, in a number of different states, and they do a number of different types of businesses. In the mortgage business, we always talk about replenishing pools of money to be able to lend out. Uh, And I know USF is in that business of aggregating loans and then turning around and either servicing them or selling them off to a larger entity. How is that into the business going, and do you see that into the business, more demand for the product? Well, yeah. When you're a seller servicer, you know, Freddie, for Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, Ginny right. uh, Mac, what happens is, is that Jeff is absolutely right. You buy pools of money at different interest rates, and what you do is you try to fill those orders of those interest rates up. And once you do that, what you do is after you fund these loans for the different individuals, you either service them in your own servicing portfolio or you sell them off to another lender or another servicer, whatever you want to do. At the end of the day, what happens now is, is when the market does slow up, what happens in traditional mortgaging, now you have less deals. So what happens is you get more scrutinized. Right, (laughs) So, So for me, I always say I love traditional loans. Everyone knows I love traditional loans. That's what I started off in the business. But what I've been noticing is in these pooling situations, a lot of these companies are looking for alternative lending, which we always talk about on the Mortgage Voice, and which Jeff has always talked about at Malibu Funding. And I'm actually here talking about it in United Security Financial. More opportunities with different types of alternative financing is out there, and people that are normally doing traditional loans are looking for those as well, non QM loans. They're looking for it because now, you don't have to be so involved. The liability is not there as much. And at the end of the day, it's easier to get qualified. Give us an example of a couple of the products that are hot right now that you're, you're doing a lot of. I absolutely will. So in regards to primary residences, what we're looking at right now is non-QM loans have the ability to qualify a, a, a considering them a full doc loan, which is tax returns, paychecks, does, and W-2s. But a non-QM loan equivalent to a traditional loan is a 12-month bank statement loan. It's a loan where you could take 12 months of your business or personal bank statements, take the average of the deposits for 12 months, and now that acts as your income, which now takes the place of your tax returns. Now, of course, with them bank statements, the deposits are going to read more or show more income then your tax returns are because you're writing things off on your tax return, right. which now means it helps your t- income ratio and you qualify for more loans. On top of that, these loans can go up to 3 to $4 million and they have no mortgage insurance, which allows you to cut your check, at, write the check at the end of the month, the same as though you were writing a check for a lower interest rate loan that you've been used to. And on top of that, that same loan has the ability to stretch from 360 months to 480 months. So you can imagine what kind of money you can save as far as writing a check every month if you're worried about interest rates or your monthly bills or your budget. So this is a great product that we're selling right now that's been doing amazing. You know, you're talking about a uh, 40-year loan, and I read a huge article today that said, you know, you may not see uh, housing prices come down, but you're going to see the length of mortgages increase and what they were talking about was exactly what you just said is the 40-year loan meaning that if it's a longer time period you're obviously your payments are going to go down because there's a longer time to pay uh for that amount of money and i like the fact that you've been talking about it for a year easy (laughs) thank you sir Sure. i like to say that you know i'm not nostradamus (laughs) but i can see into the future a little bit Uh to show and to know that we do our research and that's one thing that Jeff has always taught, 
and the culture of Malibu is knowing about the product, knowing what you can do to deliver to the client, to give them many, many different options so that they're not just pigeon held into traditional mortgages that a lot of people can't qualify for. Uh, we offer non-QM and many other products that we can help individuals out so they can you know, strategically and creatively getting to some mortgage finance. You know, we, we talked earlier in the year, we talked about how we had some buyers that were still at the hangover, the 3% hangover, right? That they just couldn't get that out of their head. Well, now that we've been down the road with these higher interest rates for a good time, a good while now, do you see the resistance in you saying, hey, look, these are the way it is right now. Let's lock in something and then make sure that you get the property refinanced later. Is there more receptivity to that? Absolutely, because people were waiting, sitting on the sideline, right. losing out on great properties, losing out on properties that they could have had equity now by even with the higher interest rate, and realizing that they're missing out. And, and finally, understanding that the interest rates are not going to magically go down to borrow. Nope. They will fluctuate as we go. And until we get it, we're going into election year, until we get to a point where there's some, 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 some true stability, then we'll see the interest rates come back down. And I tell people, they'll never get back to where they were because that was an all-time low, but they will get lower. So what now we're talking about is strategy, is saying short-term, long-term. No one wants to hold a high interest rate loan for a long period of time, so nobody's mind is there. But if we get you into a loan that has different value-added services creatively that can cause you to write a lower check every month, then what you'll do is be your, you, you can weather the storm, and then when it's time and the interest rates do come down, you're not stuck in a loan. You don't have a prepayment penalty that won't allow you to get into a new loan, but you'll be ready to transact, refinance into a lower-term loan that you now can lock in for 30 years fix and leave it alone and be happy. Yeah, I the, good solutions to all the problems that are out there existing in the marketplace are flexibility and the ability to be able to uh, buy when you can. Uh, meaning that if you have the down payment and the monthly you can qualify for, get into the property. The property is the thing, right? I mean, that's where the equity is going to be. That's where your value is going to be over the long term. Now, maybe not the first couple of years because the interest rates are what they are. But as you said, they, they fluctuate. I was quoting last uh, week on the show, 70, 80 well, percent of the borrowers out there have mortgages below 5 percent right now. So what does this tell you? That means that, obviously, interest rates fluctuate. They do. They, they absolutely fluctuate. And you just have to understand that if you ride a wave and understand and see the different cycles, the trends will tell you where we're going. And at the end of the day, don't panic. And it's super important, and, and I'm not saying that just because we are originators, Jeff, but I'm really saying if you find someone who can let you earn while you learn, and that means teach you, why you're doing what you're doing, and not panic and show you that there's long-term and short-term strategies that you can uh, implement so that you can get into this market. That's the most important thing. Knowledge is key and patience is key in the industry right now. Right. I agree 100%. We're up against it. Would you let people know how to get in touch with you? Uh, Charles is doing loans all over the place, uh, formerly based in uh, I don't know, you were in Nevada, you were in California, you're out in North Carolina. <laughs> I don't know where you are now, but you're one heck of a loan officer, so let them know how they can get in touch with you. I really appreciate it. Sure. You can always reach me at that good old Nevada, 702-328-5191. That's 702-328-5191. Or you can reach me at cgiscom at usfwholesale.net. Again, that's cgiscom at usfwholesale.net. Thank you, Charles. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Jeff, thanks for always having me, my friend. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. That's Charles Giscombe from United Security Financial. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, and uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back. I'm Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice. Thanks for tuning back in with us, back for our last segment of the show. And again, thanks very much. We've had some great guests here today talking about not only what's going on in uh, the world of mortgages, programs, uh, whether it's over at Kind Lending 
or whether it's at United Security Financial, you need professionals in your life to trust. I know the earlier segment, that's what I was talking about, is uh, there is a lot of... Mm, there's a lot of decision making that you have to do. Now you have to really put your uh, big person pants on when you get into this type of game, or else you really get taken advantage of. And I do not want to see that happen to you. Anyway, let's get to some of the news to use section of the show that we hadn't gotten to before. Uh, let's see the inflation. All right, so the CPI number came out. Inflation was down. Overall prices down uh, to 3.1 percent inflation per year. Now, when I say down, that means down from the previous month, not down from uh, the high, and we've gone up actually inflation-wise uh, quite a bit, and people are paying anywhere from 15 to 19 percent more for things today than they paid two and three years ago. That's not a good thing. We would like to see some de-inflation or uh, deflation uh, in order to offset uh, some of these historical highs that we've seen in pricing. We've seen some of that in gasoline prices. Gasoline is down 8.9 percent year over year. We get fluctuations in the gas prices all year round, whether it's now where we're into uh, less driving season and we're into a glut in the uh, amount of oil being produced here in the U.S. Uh, actually in September we hit an all-time high of the amount of oil that is being pumped on a daily basis. I think if I have it here somewhere it was 13.2 million barrels a day in September. Now next year we're predicting, or not we are predicting, but the oil industry is predicting about 13.3 million barrels a day. This is all on um, on the benefit of shale oil drilling, whether you're again or a four, uh, I think everybody agrees that energy will be oil-based for the foreseeable future, regardless of the amount of renewables that we have, both in wind and solar, uh, electric vehicles and such. There is some pushback on all those fronts. I think most people get used to something, even though it's not great for you, and they just don't want to change. Uh, but mostly, they don't want to be told to change. And I think to come to that in a natural sense takes people a long time. Look, I like French fries as much as everybody. So to get me not to have French fries with my dinner or my burger is probably not going to happen quickly. But if you hammer me enough, hey, I stopped drinking Diet Coke, so I I guess the french fries can come anyway in that stupid analogy about energy yes presented with enough facts long enough either you or your children or your children's children it just takes time and unfortunately the world is heating up we'll wait to see what happens in the new year on all of that front uh, but uh, inflation in general has come down, and that's a good thing. I mentioned gasoline prices down 8.9% year over year. Food prices, however, uh, have gone up 4% year over year. Now, there's an index called the Shelter Index. <laughs> Funny things that economists come up with to talk about housing. Anyway, so Shelter Index, which is whether the cost of um, sheltering one person uh, goes up or goes down, and that's what the index is all about. There's trending in the index, there's renting, there's owning, uh, there's, you know, whatever other kinds of, of uh, shelter there is. Anyway, the shelter index went up 6.5% year over year. Now, the interesting thing about this, uh, we talk about inflation. What is the inflation rate? Then we talk about the core inflation rate, the CPI, the core uh, inflation rate is... Those things, if you throw out energy and you throw out food prices, because they're kind of volatile, the rest of that is kind of, you know, what the basis is. So if the shelter index year over year is 6.5% increase, it's 70% of the core CPI, consumer price index. So that tells you that housing, what we talk about on this show which is housing and mortgages, housing and mortgages. That's all we talk about. How do you get in? Is there enough housing? How much is it going to cost? That's what this particular part of the inflation data talks about. 70% of a number, which is the core inflation rate, is this shelter index. So it is, when, when they're talking about inflation, yeah, I always say that, Inflation of your house, if you own, is a good thing. People like that inflation because it means you bought it 100000 now it's worth 200000 That's a good thing. But it is inflation. 
Now, if you're a buyer, you're saying, hey, housing is so expensive, I can't afford it. That's what they call the affordability index. So there's, there's a give and take to all that. If we have 50 million, 51 million mortgages out there, how many of those mortgages, I said it earlier in the segment, 80% of those mortgages are below 5%. You think those people aren't happy about what's going on in inflation in the housing market? Not only are their house values going up, but their mortgage payments are lowest in history. So it's in the shelter index, which is mainly what the core CPI is, yeah, these are the things you have to consider when you hear the buzzwords or the news or what's going on overall in the news about what's happening in inflation. Okay, so as I said, inflation itself is returning to normal. If I didn't say it, I'm saying it now. Inflation itself is returning to normal. Gasoline prices are down, and some of the other numbers uh, overall we're seeing at 3.1% overall inflation from a year ago. The 2% number is within sight, right? We might see another year from now, uh, 2% or very close to it. So there's an article I read. I thought it was interesting. I'm going to bring it to you about why inflation is returning to normal. Uh, the, the high level, the inflationary pressures, you know, the what makes things go up. Uh, and the main reason that things went up was because of the pandemic, right? We, we all know that. Due to the imbalance between the supply and the demand. Now, what happened is two things happened. The supply chain, the way things are made, the way things are brought to you at market, went away, stopped, uh, was interrupted. And the reason being is because COVID shut down a lot of industries, a lot of countries, let's face it. U.S. was shut down for two weeks in uh, 2020, in March, two weeks we were shut down, the whole economy, and that happened all over the world, which sent, uh, obviously, uh, a stop signal, and then a lot of other uh, industries, a lot of other, a lot of industries out there, they had their own COVID restrictions and their own COVID um, uh, problems in terms of slowing down what they were doing, which would be considered normal in a supply chain atmosphere, which means simply less stuff out there. There was less stuff. Now, if you couple that with the U.S. government, and a lot of Western countries did this too, they borrowed a bunch of money and they sent out checks to everybody. I think three checks, $1,200 each, to every consumer in America. $3,600. Doesn't sound like a lot until you realize that if everybody gets that, I don't know, what did it add? $2 trillion to the deficit? Yes, it did. And as a result of that, the consumer had a lot of money to spend. So you have a lot of money to spend, and you don't have a lot of stuff to buy. What does that do to the remaining things that you can buy? Right, price goes up. That's what inflation was, and that's why it hit quickly, and it went up to 9 almost 10% on a yearly basis uh, two years ago. So in all of that, we have seen a complete reversal in that. We often talk on this show about how the money out there in the economy needs to be soaked up for inflation to drop. Well, it has done that by the Fed raising rates. It has done that because the consumer just can't stop spending money. And I referred to that last week when I said credit card debt is at $1.1 trillion. And that is a new, you know, one of the new all-time highs. And that just shows you that, yes, they ran out of money, but no, they can't stop spending. Does it remind you of anybody you know? I know a lot of people that just live on their credit cards and they pay the minimums. Not a good thing for the consumer or the country, but it does keep the engine of production at the factories going, which is why we've seen a real chugging along economy here. Uh, and we'll probably end the year somewhere between 2.3 and 2.6% GDP, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, there's a bunch of things here that I'm going to get to, but not this week. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Really appreciate you listening to the show. Always a pleasure bringing you this information, and we'll see you next time. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. For more on today's topic, visit www.malibufunding.net. News, weather, and talk from KCAA, broadcasting to the Moreno Valley, Corona, and Riverside. Tehibo Tea Club's original Pure Pouty Arco Super Tea comes from the only tree in the world that fungus